Right. Well, thank you, team. Um, right. I, no, I'm, I'm going to, um, if Pete doesn't mind, I'm just going to borrow a, um, a whiteboard. Look at this. As if by magic. I'm taking this from Jamie. Right, right, right. Now, it's been great, hasn't it, this morning, just to, um, to be part of a family. Don't you have the, the, those prayers? Thank you, Malcolm, for bringing us... Um, and we use the terminology, don't we? We use the, the term... On the, is it is it ring? Anyway, I'll let, I'll let you get on. Um, these are terms which trip off our tongue, don't they, as, as as Christians? And today and for the next four weeks, we want to talk about family, um, and us particularly as a church, as a church family. Um, and I wanted to start just by setting the background and and to give us a little bit of a, a, a think about uh, about family, both in the natural and in the spiritual, okay? So, and I hesitate a little bit to do this, but I want to talk, start, um, with a bit of help from you guys on on some aspects of the natural family. Um, Now, I know families are very different and and nothing is quite maybe as it should be, but this is is the storybook family, okay? If you you follow me. So, um, a bit of help, please. What, 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 I'm, I'm going to write down some, some family members on the board. So, what do we start off? Mum. Mum. Okay. Mum. And dad. Dad. Okay. Dad and mum. Okay. What else do we have in our family? Kids. Kids. Okay. My writing's terrible, isn't it? K1, K2, K3. Three kids. <laughs> Only if it's a big family. Right, what else do we have? Dog. Dog. Oh, wow. Grandparents. Okay. Right, this is a bit more complicated, isn't it? So we've got um, granddad, dad. Grand, you can tell I'm a mathematician, can't you? Granddad, mum. Granddad. No, granddad, mum. No, sorry. Oh. Granddad, mum. And grand. Ma, mum, and that's an M. <clears throat> right. Well, we, 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 I'm, I'm trying, aren't I? Oh no, 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 no. That's too hard. Can, can we? What, what do we have on at this level? Aunties and uncles. I, I like it. So we've got. Um, um, our, our auntie and uncle, I'm, I'm going to give up here, but you know, we probably have some here as well. And then what else? We, we would have down here numerous cousins um, on both sides, maybe. And that, that, I mean, that, that'll do. That'll do. That, there's, there's a kind of a, 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 f- a family, isn't it? And, and I'm sure in some way, however, however our situation may be working out at the moment, <coughs> Somewhere in here, we, we fit in, depending on our age, depending on all sorts of things. Somewhere we find our place in a family, um, surrounded by, by those who are related to us. Now, uh, saying that on one side, I don't, want to, I don't want to have a look at the Old Testament. And then I want to have a look at the New Testament, right? Um, and one of the principles you find over and over again in the Bible is that what happens and things that occur in the natural, in the Old Testament, have their spiritual fulfilment and outworking in the New Testament. Very important principle as, as we read our Bibles. So I want to have a look at families in the Old Testament. Um, and the, there's a, quite a lot of families 
described, your, your, you theologians and Marxists will, will, I'm sure, uh, come across or, or think immediately of, of families in the Old Testament. I mean, the biggest one probably is, is the children of Israel, isn't it, as a, as a family. Um, they were all descended from Abraham originally. You remember if you go back to um, Genesis chapter 12, God says to Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. Um, you know, and, and that's how he starts. That from Abraham, from Abraham and his wife Sarah, God would build this massive nation, a, a huge family that would come from, from Abraham. A couple of generations down is, is, is Jacob, his grandson, who God named Israel. And from Israel came the children of Israel, or the, the, the Jewish people that we know today. And um, so you might say, well, Abraham was up here and, and Jacob was, was down here. Um, and if you, want a, if you want an example of a confused family, have a look at Jacob. Because Jacob, um, Jacob well, he married his cousin, but he accidentally married the wrong cousin, um, and then married the other cousin as well. So he had two wives. I don't know how this fits into this. And I'm glad that James didn't ask me to, um, to talk about Christian marriage. Um, today, because that's quite a complicated thing from the Bible. Um, but Jacob had two wives who were actually cousins, because Jacob's father-in-law was his uncle. So there's another, another level of confusion. Um, so w when you start trying to draw a diagram of, of Jacob's life, um, you, you, it is confusing. And Jacob, of course, had 12, 12 sons and at least one daughter. Uh, according to the Bible, and um, so there were two, two wives, two mums, but then there were another two, another level of confusion. So each of his two wives had maid servants, and, and the mother of some of his children were, if you want a messy family, have a look at Jacob and the way their family um, ran. And yet, in the Old Testament, it seemed that God's way of blessing people was in large families and there's even a psalm if you uh, psalm 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 128 one of the psalms of ascent listen to this uh, blessed are all who fear the lord who walk in obedience to him you will eat of the fruit of your labor blessings and prosperity will be yours your wife, it says, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. So somehow in this Old Testament um, setting, a large family was seen as a blessing from God, which of course it is. But there's a difficulty, isn't there? Because where does that leave so many of, 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 of us where, where it hasn't worked out. You know, where does that leave the single people? Where does that leave um, the childless couple? Where does that leave you know, all sorts of people where, where, where difficulty and breakdown has brought uh, disruption and, and it hasn't worked out? Are, are, they, are they left out? Are they, are they not blessed by God? Can they not be part of, of, of this blessed family blessing? That is the Old Testament. And this is why we need now to transfer that to the New Testament. Okay, now, there's a lot of people who know their New Testaments very well here. How many families are described in the New Testament? Not a lot. We know, we know that Peter had a brother, don't we? Andrew. Peter and brother were Andrews. James and John were brothers. And they had a father called Zebedee. We know Peter was married because Jesus healed his mother-in-law, so we presume he had a wife. We know Philip, one of the seven, had seven, did he seven daughters who prophesied? Was it seven or three? One of them. Um, Jesus, of course. I mean, Jesus is, is a key. Jesus, we know, he had a mum called Mary. He had a father called uh, Joseph. We know he had brothers, at least. Okay? Um, but there's very little... Very little of his story, family story, is there. What, what happened to Joseph? We don't know. Um, Joseph, he was there when uh, they went to Jerusalem when Jesus was 12. Apparently Joseph was there then. From then on, we, we know nothing. And you'd have thought, wouldn't you, in, in, the, in the natural, if this was a natural story, you'd have expected a little bit more family background if that was important. But 
But then there, there was, a, there was a, um, an incident which we find in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, right, let me, because I wrote, oh, gone the wrong way. There we go. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside. Okay, so we know he had mother and brothers wanting to speak to him. And someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. And he replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? <coughs> Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. It's, it's one of those stories which I guess we've read many times. But think about it. This is an incredible statement, isn't it? Incredible statement in a, in a, in a culture where family was so important, where your ancestry was so important. And, and I guess that's thinking of ourselves that for, for, for many that is still the case isn't it and yet Jesus kind of cuts across that and from the latter the, the ongoing story in the gospels it's clear that he didn't fully he wasn't rejecting his mother and his brothers we know that um, well possibly one of his brothers called James because Paul talks about a James as a leader in the church in Jerusalem <laughs> Um, he says he was the Lord's brother. Now, whether it was his blood brother or whether it was a cousin, we don't know, but um, it could well be that one of Jesus' actual brothers became a leader in the church in Jerusalem in the early days of the church. So Jesus wasn't, re you know, wasn't rejecting his own family at all, but he'd say, look, you are my brothers and sisters, my mother, pointing to his disciples. And... and just in the same way as this morning we were talking about our brothers and sisters in Iran, our brothers and sisters in Eritrea, in China. That is where we are. And it's quite hard to get traction on that. What was easier, I tell you, if you'd come last Sunday, many of you were here, some of you weren't able to be here, last Sunday afternoon we had a, a light party. Um, and it was great, it was great fun. The kids were playing around and, and people were wrapped up in toilet paper and, 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 and we had coffee and we sang some choruses. And it was, it was a fantastic time. It was, it was like the family was here. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. And, and this is family. But so are our brothers and sisters in Iran. Uh, those that are in prison today facing sentence of death or whatever are as much our family. And what I want to unpack today is, is how that can be and how we can build that into our heart and our lives. Now, John, John, the, um, in, in his gospel at the beginning, in this great the prologue, prologue to, to, to the gospel, um, in chapter 1, it says, He, that is Jesus, came to his own, and his own did not receive him. And, and he was talking there, um, he was talking there about, um, about his, his, his people, the people of, of Israel, the Jewish people. His own did not receive him. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. But, and this is where this bit comes in, but, but, as many as received him to him, to them, he gave the right or the power to become children of God. Children of God. I just wanted to, okay? Children of God. Children. This, this is the relationship. Children. Children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, I just want to dwell on that a little bit because. It, 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 it's, there's some key information here that is so important. Um, some of the words here are not, are not that easy to understand, but this is what I believe Jesus was saying. Okay? Not of blood. You're not a child of God because of your lineage, your nationality. See, he was speaking to Jewish people. And, and the, pe the, the Jewish people believed that their place in the kingdom of God was because they were Jews, because Abraham was their father. They, they were in his kingdom because they were descended from Abraham. 
And, and John is saying here, no, it's not your bloodline. There used to be, a, there was a time when I was young when people would say Britain was a, a Christian country. Maybe they still say it, but n not as much now as they used to. And it, it never really was. A country can't be Christian. A country is full of people, and they, they may be Christians. But there was a sort of thought by some people that I'm a Christian because I'm British, or I'm a Christian because I'm in the Church of England. You know, th th there's, this, there's this thought that in your lineage... In your nationality, there's some, some, some uh, entry into, into this family of God. And John is saying, no, not of blood. What's the next one? Nor of the will of the flesh. You see, you, dad and mum get together, have a cuddle, and children are produced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Something like that. Um, and, 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 but... That doesn't make children of God. That's the point. You're not, you do not get your membership of God's family because of your parents. They can train you. They can pray for you. They can, uh, you know, if, if it's all wonderful, and so often it isn't, but they can train you, they can teach you, they can read you the Bible, they can send you to Sunday school, they can bring you to church. That doesn't make you a Christian. The, their children are no different to anybody else who comes in from nowhere with no background in Christianity. They're all in exactly the same place. Exactly the same place. Your Christianity does not depend on your parents. So, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man. You can't train to be a Christian. You, 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 can. you, you can. You can study the Bible. You can go to Bible college. You can go to Oxford University. You can become an expert theologian. That doesn't qualify you as a, as a member of God's family. That's not, that's not how you get there. That's not how you become a member of God's family, a child of God. You can't study for it. You can't qualify for it. You can't inherit it from your parents. You can't be it because you're of a particular ethnic group or nationality. None of that. What is it then? But, he says, born of God. The last thing, but of God. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born, miss out all the not-ofs, born of God. You see, the way you become a member of this family is to be born into it, isn't it? In the natural, you become part of a family through birth. That's how you become a member of the family. And the, the thing about the Christian family, the family of the church, is that you become part of it by birth, by a spiritual birth, by being born again. Jesus talks about this in, 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 when he was speaking to Nicodemus. He said, you know, if you, those, if you want to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. It's this new start, this new beginning, this radical transformation. And, and, and you can't qualify for it. It's entirely God's work. And that's the wonder of it. That's the absolute truth. And it's, it's, it's the wonder of, of, of God's salvation. It's, it's his work and not ours. It doesn't depend on us. It's him. And, and that's my, my prayer for all. All who are here. Uh, Celia prayed. And I know I, for years I had a block. I had a block. My parents brought me up as a Christian. I, I, they read the Bible to me. I was familiar with the stories of the Bible. God hadn't switched the light on in my heart until one particular time when I suddenly realized what he'd done for me. And that was like a, a turning point in my life. It took place over a period of time. It wasn't like a, you know, a, a lightning bolt. I realized what a wonderful God he was and that I could trust him and rely on him. And, and that was when these things began to happen. Now... The, look, we've been going 20 minutes and I didn't got to the passage. <laughs> now, okay, so we're going to move to the, the passage that, was, um, that was, was brought was Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. But I, I'm, going to, I'm going to do a bit more of Romans 12 than, than just, just verses 1 and 2. Um, let's, let's read it. Um, I read it out to you. Therefore, th that's part of it, what we've got there. 
Um, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. That is the sentence that I put up there. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and this is this new birth thing that, that is so, so critical for us. This transformation. It's, it's a renewal. It's a, it's a new start. And it's, it's foundational. Now, if you know the book of Romans, Romans is a very complicated, well, quite a complicated book. And, and we're in chapter 12 here. And chapters 1 to 11, Paul covers a massive amount of doctrinal stuff. Um, the first eight chapters are all about this great salvation by faith alone. Then chapters 9 to 11, he's talking about the place of the Jewish people in, 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 the, in the kingdom of God. And at the end of chapter 11, 11 he, he sort of bursts out into this kind of song of praise of, of, of the wonder of God. I'll just read it to you. He says this, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his paths beyond tracing. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counsellor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Therefore, he says, I urge you. So this is... Paul has this, this sort of burst of God is so big. I've just explained all this doctrine which has blessed us down the years. But Paul says... God is bigger than all this stuff. God is wonderful. God is more than we can comprehend. He said, therefore, I urge you, give your lives as a, a living sacrifice to, 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 um, to serve him. And, so, and, and it's, it's, it's there that, that we, want to, um, we want to just spend a little bit of time. And I've written some questions and some thoughts for if you're in a house group on Tuesday, more opportunity just to... Let God bless you through these, through these things and work out some of the things that, that, that he, he might be saying to us as a church. Therefore, he says, I urge you. I urge you, brothers and sisters, note that, brothers, sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed. Now, Paul never leaves you... Um, guessing. So the rest of the chapter 12, he's talking about what that transformed mind should or might be like. Now, the important thing is not to think of these as a, as a tick box. I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, because that's law. And, and if Paul was strong about anything, it was, we have, we're not in the age of law, we're in the age of grace. And whenever these sort of you need to be like this comes up. We need to not look at ourselves, but look at God and say, Lord, make me like this. That is the answer. Because God is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one who can transform us. When we're talking about transformation, renewal, it's God that does it. We don't do it by our own effort. We can't qualify in that sense. Very, very important to, to remember those. So, moving on to... Um, uh, the, the, the next verse he says, For by gra- the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, okay, this is him speaking to us, verse 3, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, um, yeah, read that again, Mike. Um, it's very easy, isn't it? Um, and it's easy to spot that in others. Um, we have politicians, don't we, on the telly so often saying, I've done this, and I've done this, and I've delivered that, and not even a we. (laughs) We've done this, it's I've done it. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. Now, this, this is very easy stuff. Okay, now I've got, I've got two legs, which are great for, at the moment, anyway, thankfully. Um, they're good for walking, they're good for going upstairs, and things like that. But they're pretty rubbish for pumping blood, aren't they? They're just 
don't do it. Whereas my heart is great at pumping blood at the moment, thankfully, um, but it's pretty rubbish at getting upstairs. And, you know, thumbs. I, I, WhatsApp is, is fantastic if you've got thumbs. And if you didn't have thumbs, it'd be much harder. Feet and toes are, are very difficult, really difficult to do WhatsApp with your toes. If you try it after the service, if you like. Um, so we have different members, don't we? And in God's body and, and God's family, and I like to turn the word body into family because it's kind of the same thing. In Christ, we, though many, form one body, one family, okay? Each member belongs to all the others. Some of these things you just need to soak in, allow to soak in. Each member belongs to everyone else. That's, that's quite a thought, isn't it? Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Somewhere. Yeah, if your gift is prophesying, okay, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, if you look at this list, Paul's mixed up spiritual things and practical things, like one after the other. And, and, and you know, prophesy, oh, it would be great to be a prophet and speak the, Lord, the Lord's word to, to the church. Fantastic. If that is your gift, great. Serving. You know, it's, it's there. It's the second in the list. Who knows? Well, that, that might mean anything. It might mean hoovering the floor. It might mean making coffee. It might be doing toddlers. The, there's so many ways in which we can serve the family, <coughs> serve one another. And it's right there at the top of the list. If, it's, if your gift is serving, then serve. It's, if it's teaching, teach. Maybe it's not from the front on the, on the Sunday morning. Maybe it's in house group. Maybe there's opportunities where God allows you to, to share what he's put on your heart, to teach, to encourage. Boy, do we need encouragement. We haven't um, prayed specifically for, 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 for Tony and Sue this morning, but you know, they need our encouragement. They need our prayers. They need our support. Um, we, we, we love them. And it's interesting, isn't it, that, that actually God is working these things out in our lives, because we find there's that heartfelt concern for people, our brothers and sisters, as if they were our own brothers and sisters in the flesh. So they are in the church. And, and, and we can't help but feel that draw, that, that urge to pray and support those that, that are one with us. If it's giving, give generously. Well, man, this is a generous church. I, I'm not going to say any more. If it's to lead... You guys who've, who've, who've stepped up to the plate to lead the church, boy, it's a big responsibility and a wonderful joy. God will bless you abundantly, I know. Um, Lee, do it diligently. Diligence, Lord, give them diligence in their leading, we pray. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. These are things which God will outwork in us through this wonderful gift, this rebirth. And again, it's not a tick list. It's not something we have to do these things. It's a gift of God, and we need to search him for it. Look, it's 12 o'clock. We're nearly, nearly there. You've got an opportunity on, on, on Tuesday to, to have, a, have a look through these things again. So it's worth, it's worth doing. There is so much, so much here. Love must be sincere. I've highlighted the love... It's this agape, this God's love for us, which is at the foundational to the relationship that God has with us and which God has produced in us for him and for others in our family in the church. It must be sincere. It must be kind of unfeigned, not disguised. It, no hypocrisy there. It's a, it's a, <clears throat> a sincere love. Hate what is evil. Cling to what's good. Be devoted to one another in love. Devotion. Such a wonderful word, isn't it? Think on that. Imbibe it. Honour one another above yourselves. Honour has to do with rank, doesn't it? You know, to think of others as better than you. To be a doormat, if that's what it means. To honour others above yourselves. It's such a key in any, any family. People, people who honour the others. And it's the same here. We're not 
it, it, it goes back, doesn't it, to that one. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Humility. Be diva. Honour. Honour. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. That's our prayer for Tony and Sue at the moment. In, in this time. That they would, God would give them patience. Uh, and we need to support them in that. Faithful in prayer. What a wonderful thing. Just to be faithful in that. To spend time with God whenever we can. Whenever, when we're walking the dog. When we're out doing anything. God is instant in prayer. We don't have to get down on our knees and put our hands together and close our eyes. You can, you can talk to God at any time. In the same way that when you're walking with your friend, you talk to your friend. It's a chat. Prayer. Be faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Such a, a great principle. Practice hospitality. There we go. Look, it's 12 o'clock. So just to, just to summarise, we are in God's family, in the church family by birth. Such a wonderful principle. And it's not by our own effort. It's not by anything that we do or qualify for. It's God has birthed us into his church. Transformation and renewal of our thinking from natural to spiritual. You know, we think of natural things Think of them spiritually. And thank God when we see these godly characteristics in our brothers and sisters. Just thank God for that. And, and encourage, encourage people in that way. That is such an important principle. I'm going to close. In Mark, Jesus says this. Truly I tell you, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Okay? Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, ch children, fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. Lord, thank you for your promises. We thank you that there are really no lonely people in your family. Or there should be no lonely people in your family. Lord, open our eyes, we pray, as your family here, as your church. Keep our eyes alert, Lord, for those who need to be embraced. For those who, who are struggling. For those who need encouragement. Lord, you put us here as your family. Lord, and we've been through some tough times earlier this year. And I pray, Lord, and ask that uh, you would unite us. Do this miraculous thing amongst us, we pray. And bind us together. Amen. Amen. Um, just, just completely to finish, this, this many years ago, there was um, a young MP who was murdered, actually. It was the time of the Brexit referendum there. A woman from up the north somewhere called Jo Cox, you might remember, in her maiden speech to Parliament when she'd become an MP, she said, <clears throat> we're far more united and have far more in common than that which divides us. And uh, I just thought that was something for, for, for us as a church. And, and there have been things which have troubled us, which have made things tough for, for many of us in, in, the past, in the past six, nine months. And yet I know that we are far more united and have far more in common than anything which divides us. And God is on our side as a body, as a family. Let's cling to that. Amen.